Well, it's uh, one minute past seven, everyone. So good evening and welcome to uh, this webinar hosted by myself, Andrew Howie, and my colleague, Kate Woolley, uh, which is all about why you need to do the BSLM Lifestyle Medicine Core Accreditation Programme. Um, we have a short presentation uh, to go through, which will give you more information uh, about the programme, um, and then uh, we'll uh, be open to any questions and answers. Uh, if you could please pop any questions that you have in the Q&A box, that'd be really helpful. Uh, my colleague Georgina will be in the background answering some of those where she can uh, and any others, uh, Kate and I will, will pick up at the end. Um, so really appreciate you taking your time out of the evening to join us this evening. Uh, and as I say, we will give you some more information on the new BSLM core accreditation in lifestyle medicine, why we think it's an excellent opportunity for you to further your development uh, and uh, your knowledge of lifestyle medicine. Um, so first of all, a few introductory slides. Um, so co-accreditation lifestyle medicine, what is it? Well, basically, it's a program that's been designed by BSLM uh, to offer uh, learners an opportunity to uh, learn about lifestyle medicine, to develop the skills that they have, uh, and then work out how to deliver that in practice so you can actually get on board, help your patients. So um, I would imagine the majority of you will know a bit about BSLM, British Society of Lifestyle Medicine. But for those who haven't come across us in the past, then firstly, welcome. Um, and secondly, uh, just to let you know, we're a charity that's been going for about six or seven years now. Uh, we're UK based with headquarters up in Scotland. Uh, we have a, um, a team that's based across the UK uh, with over 1,600 members and over 2,500 active supporters. Some time ago, just over two years ago, that the society took the decision to uh, implement a professional staff team, uh, when in the past had just been run by volunteers and had been very successful. Uh, but to take it to the next stage, we came on board, uh, just to say, just over a couple of years ago. And one of the um, goals and objectives of BSLM was always to uh, create its own learning academy, a place that uh, we could provide high level professional learning uh, to people who wish to learn more about lifestyle medicine and how to implement and practice. So that is the, the BSLM Learn Academy where it came from. It was being designed with you in mind. Every decision we've made around the Learn Academy, uh, whether it be which uh, learning management system to invest in, or the type of qualifications and courses that we offer, all had the learners at the, the heart of uh, what we wanted to do. The Learning Academy mantra was set up learn, develop, deliver. We want you to learn, we want you to develop with us your skills, and then we want to give you those additional skills to then deliver them in practice. Um, BSLM wants to be at the forefront of lifestyle medicine education. And I think that when you know that in the first couple of uh, months that we've had of core accreditation being available, uh, we've got nearly 150 people participating in the programme, which I think is a great success for us and really shows that the um, appetite and the desire is there for people to learn more about lifestyle medicine. So the Learn Academy team, very briefly, is myself. As I say, I'm Andrew Howie. I'm Head of Growth and Development of BSLM, been in post just over two years. Uh, Kate uh, Woolley, who you'll speak to or hear from soon, is our Clinical Director. Uh, she's been with us just over a year now. Uh, we also have my colleague Georgina uh, and Maria, uh, who have uh, other roles within the Learn Academy team. So as you can see, we're a small team, but we're ably assisted by additional support from the wider uh, BSLM family. Uh, that includes uh, support at a high level from the likes of Fraser, our executive director and the board, uh, but also more operationally through uh, Emma and Alex specifically, who no doubt we'll have all uh, met and uh, communicated with over the following months. So it is a real team effort to get where we are and, and what we want to progress to. Uh, and I think that one of the uh, reasons that we have been successful up to now and we believe we'll continue to be so is having that strength and that culture within the team of all having the passion around lifestyle medicine and to promote it and be successful with the developments that we have. So BSLM core accreditation, you may have read about it on the website, you may have heard of it through social media. So what is it? It's a program that launched in January this year. For the last few years, BSLM have been offering the uh, IBLM board certification, or more commonly known as the diploma. And we've put through over 800 people uh, over that qualification over the last four years, and it's been very successful. But we always knew in the back of our mind that it was lacking in a couple of things. Firstly, uh, it was very US-centric, um, which didn't really help, and you know, it wasn't relevant to a lot of the um, systems that we have in our country. And secondly, with having a one-off exam, 
Uh, it was quite difficult and challenging for some people to always be able to actually take the exam and to fit that study within their work-life balance. So that was something that we looked at when uh, we wanted to put our own core accreditation program together. So what we've done is we've provided something that has a spiral curriculum. You start off at stage one, you work up the stages two and three until you have progressed all the way through the program. We want it to be self-paced because we understand that people have pressures on the time, whether it's work or outside of work. And it isn't always possible to, um, to knuckle down at any one time and to ensure that you have that opportunity to study as you would like. So having something self-paced, we felt was really important. As opposed to a one-off exam, we feel that, um, especially in this day and age, a continuous assessment model is more appropriate to the way that people like to learn and the way that people are expected to be able to demonstrate the knowledge. It's all very well-known facts, but what is really important is whether you can reflect on what it is you've learned, whether you can actually demonstrate that you've learned those skills and understand the theory behind them. And that, again, comes back to the Basel M Learn Academy mantra of learn, develop, deliver. And I think when you look at the programme we've built and you look at what Kate will come on to shortly, uh, you can really see that what we've wanted to uh, endanger and in, input into the programme is the ability for people to actually use lifestyle medicine in their everyday practice. And that's really important to us. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Kate Woolley, uh, who will take you through the next set of slides. And thank you for your time so far. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit more from uh, about the LMCA. I'm, as Andrew said, I'm Kate Woolley. I'm the Clinical Director of the Learning Academy. I'm a GP by background. Um, and we're really pleased with the course that we've put together um, we, it's a comprehensive course um, covering all aspects of lifestyle medicine and we've got a real focus on um, the UK health system setup and, and what's needed to practice this in the, U, the UK setting. Um, the courses are extremely engaging and immersive and uh, available through our um, rights-based learning platform which we think is really top of top of the range and it, um, you know, really interactive um, to help you learn the best that you can. Um, we, through the platform, you have opportunity to meet other um, learners. I, that was a really um, brilliant uh, part for me uh, when I studied with the BSLM um, and I'm still in contact with my study group. And I think that that's, um, that's something that we're really pleased to be able to offer through, through the platform with the core accreditation now. Our courses, uh, we've got a number of course writers on uh, on the team and uh, where our courses are provided by people who are experts in their subject area. So we're really pleased to be able to bring you all of this um, knowledge. And our uh, Lifestyle Medicine core accreditation is going to be accredited by the European Lifestyle Medicine Council and also the World Lifestyle Medicine Organization. Um, it's also where appropriate uh, being accredited by other recognised bodies. Um, so for example, NEDPRO are a leader in nutrition and they're going to um, accredit our nutrition pillar um, and there'll be opportunities for further learning through them um, to follow on from, from the LMCA potentially. So we have lots of questions come through about how the IBLM um, diploma that we used to offer, or that we just, sorry, we do, still do offer, um, and the LMCA, how they compare and what the difference is. Um, so I'm just going to go through that in just briefly now. Um, so essentially, the IBLM is an American um, qualification, it's, so it's naturally got a bit of a U, uh, USA focus, whereas we've designed the LMCA with a, a UK focus in mind. And as well as, uh, so both of them cover the six pillars of lifestyle medicine. Um, the fundamentals of behaviour change and the, and the lifestyle medicine consultation and the resolve, uh, role of physician health. But in addition to that, the LMCA has got enhanced content on the history and growth of lifestyle medicine, where it fits alongside other medical areas, and then some really in-depth skills courses um, and around health coaching and social prescribing and group consultation. So lots of um, useful information to help you put your lifestyle medicine knowledge into practice. So in terms of numbers of hours, as you can see, the LMCA is more hours. Um, so for a very similar cost, you get a lot more content um, and to cover this additional 
um, things that I've mentioned. So six hours of learning. And then for both of them, you have your 10 hours of um, in-person learning, which is usually covered by attendance at our conference, which is a brilliant way to meet other people who are passionate about lifestyle medicine. Um, as Andrew has already um, alluded to the assessment style is different so um, the IBLM has an annual MCQ and it's one sitting only is offered so if you can't do it for whatever reason at that time you have to wait an entire year um, whereas we wanted to have something that people could do it at their own pace at the time points that fit with um, what their year looks like. Um, so thinking about uh, how will this enhance your career um, after you've done it so I mean, for me as a GP, I have really noticed a massive benefit from having studied with the BSLM. Um, you can enhance your practice with lifestyle medicine skills. Um, so even if you, um, or, you know, to continue practicing in your usual practice, but just have more options to offer to patients. Um, and in my experience, patients really want to know more about what they can be doing with their lifestyle. So I love having that in-depth knowledge to be able to offer them. Um, in terms of the skills courses, they can enhance your communication skills and um, that you um, will have learned in your health care professional training. Um, but there's a particular focus on communication skills around um, lifestyle medicine and the particular ones that you might need in, in that context. Um, so you have more, more skills to be able to draw on. Um, I, uh, well, we at BSLM feel that this is these kind of skills and knowledge is really um, vital for practicing um, as a healthcare professional in our current non-communicable disease pandemic. Um, so we're seeing so much more now, um, things like um, type 2 diabetes, a heart disease and cancers and things that have not only medical treatments but also really important lifestyle factors and being able to have good skills in, in assessing um, explaining and helping patients change lifestyle is, is so important. Um, so, for example, we've got um, previous learners with us who work in long COVID clinics who host their own group consultations. Um, I use them, my lifestyle medicine skills every day in, uh, in my practice as a GP. Um, and, and then also there's some of our learners who, who want to go on to private practice as well. So who is LMCA suitable for? Um, We've got two levels at the moment, uh, one for physician and one for healthcare professionals who've completed degree level study. Um, so obviously physicians, doctors um, is, is one, one route and then a whole range of healthcare professionals. I've put some of the main ones here, but, um, but many, many professions are eligible. Um, and if you don't fit these criteria, then get, uh, just email the office and we'd be happy to discuss it with you because there are different options available. And we also appreciate that some healthcare professionals who qualified longer ago may be working in one of these professions, but not actually hold a degree. So that, you know, that's something we are aware of and, and um, have options for as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit now about how we have structured the LMCA. Um, so as Andrew said, it's a spiral curriculum um, in three stages. The first stage uh, includes the um, foundations of lifestyle medicine and also gives you a, a grounding in the research that lifestyle medicine is based on and um, so some of the key studies that um, that tell us about how lifestyle influences our health and um, then thinking about the growth of the field the history of the field and really how it fits alongside um, other medical specialities to give our patients more options um, also it'll introduce you to the six pillars and the key principles of lifestyle medicine on that, then we build the uh, in-depth courses about the six pillars. So that's harmful substances, mental well-being, healthy relationships, nutrition, physical activity, and sleep. Um, so we've got really in-depth quality courses written by um, experts in the field and and externally accredited where appropriate, and um, to help you really in, uh, develop an in-depth knowledge about each of those. And then finally, the final part of the course is is the skills courses putting the lifestyle medicine into practice that's why I spoke about um behavior change health coaching social prescribing um group consultations and then also the role of looking after your own health amongst other courses helping you build all of the important skills for practicing lifestyle medicine so through all of um these three stages we've got our continuous assessment woven through 
to help you kind of consolidate at the end of each stage before you move on to the next bit. So a bit more about the assessment structure then. Um, and so, as I say, it's self-paced. We have various um, assessment submission windows through the year. So you can choose a time that suits you rather than having to follow our, um, our assessment pattern. Um, so you start off with your lifestyle medicine foundations and key studies. And then the assessment for that is a 1500 word essay. And then we have the six pillars and through that's assessed through one or two case studies, depending on whether you're studying the physician or healthcare professional route. And then finally, the skills of lifestyle medicine um, will be assessed through uh, a reflection on your scope of practice in your particular profession, how lifestyle medicine will be integrated, um, and also um, a critical analysis of a lifestyle medicine consultation where you can demonstrate you really understand the skills needed to practice lifestyle medicine. Um, and what, what, as we've designed this assessment strategy, we've purposefully um, gone for the written assessments, as Andrew said, because I think people generally um, want, want to be able to take their time and, and, and do these things. Um, but also, there are very different assessments at each stage to, so that we, no matter what your particular um, strengths are, there should be some somewhere where you can shine. So this is just a little look at our uh, Learning Academy platform, which, um, so this is the page you'll get to when you're kind of first sign in and you can choose what course you're studying. And then, so this is an example of what one of the courses looks like. So these, the for this one, this is um, the four, four of the modules that you just click on to go in. So as you can see, it's really nice to look at. Um, so for each course, we've got our set of well, each module will have its learning objectives um, and as this um, picture demonstrates as well they're all got videos interactive um, parts to sort of really enhance your learning experience so this is an example of the panel so you know where you click on them and it um, to reveal the answer so all different elements to keep you engaged while you're learning through the platform and then each module um, ends with a section on further resources to help you know how to take your study further if, if you want to. So the maintenance of qualification then, this applies equally for the IBLM. After you complete your qualification to remain, um, you know, to remain current, we do expect you to maintain uh, your study. So if you don't do any maintenance of your qualification then you need to repeat it after 10 years um just to you know to because of the changing scientific environment um, but we offer instead um, an annual maintenance um so it's delivered by the same learning management system and um, you get three um scientific articles that we selected or our panel of experts have selected to help you keep up to date of the evidence in lifestyle medicine and they've then got matched mcqs to um, to test your learning from them um, alongside that there's a five and a ten year cpd target um, to show us for you for you to demonstrate to us that you're continuing to learn in this field um, and we're really working hard to make sure that there's a really wide range of applicable learning because we want you to be able to develop yourself in the way that you want to and for us to be able to recognise that. So I'll hand back over to Andrew now. So thank you, uh, Kate, for that. And, and thank you really to everyone for attending. We've uh, had a really great response to uh, this webinar tonight uh, with a lot of people attending and I can see some uh, really interesting questions popping up in the Q&A box, which we'll come to. Um, so really, what are the, the next steps uh, that we'd like you to take? Well, firstly, I think, you know, once you've decided that you want to further your lifestyle medicine qualification and uh, education, and I think that when you look at the programme that we've got, and there's a lot more information on our website, including the, the full curriculum, um, then what we, you know, what we think is, you know, join the programme. We're calling our first cohort of people to go through this trailblazers because this is new. It is a new way of looking at lifestyle medicine education. It is centered around how we can help you help your patients. So eventually what we want you to do is become a trailblazer, be one of those first people to 
go through the core accreditation program and eventually you will make a difference and that's what we're here for that's why we we've, we've spent so much time and effort and invested so much into getting this program where we want it to be because ultimately um, you're the people who will take this education on you will develop those skills and you will deliver them and that makes the difference so we've Eventually, again, once we get out of it, um, we get to a point where, if this works, um, it will unleash your potential. It will show your passion for lifestyle medicine, and together we can share our mission and ensure that lifestyle medicine comes away from just a theory and a, and a textbook and actually is something that's delivered by individuals to the patients and helps improve the healthcare of the UK, which is ultimately what all of our goals is. So thank you for that. I'll stop sharing the screen now uh, and we'll sort out taking some questions. Okay, thank you very much, Kate and Andrew. Um, we've got a couple of questions to put to you both. So the first question is, is the LMCA strong on the nutrition aspect and will it prepare me to create a personalised dietary plan for patients? To say, is it strong on the nutrition aspect? Strong on the nutrition aspect, and will it prepare the learner to create a personalised dietary plan for patients? Um, so, yes, I would say, you know, one of the reasons we've asked NEDPRO to accredit it um, is to really ensure the quality of our nutrition education. And um, you might know NEDPRO is a global leader in nutritional education. Um, it, so the nutrition pillar, I think, uh, is 10 modules. Um, it covers everything you know it, um everything that i that we uh, that you might want to know about nutrition from a from a sort of introduction but perspective um or when i say 10 modules though that's like almost 10 hours worth of learning so although it's introductory it is a um quite in depth and yes indefinitely so you after you've taken it um you'd be able to assess a person's nutrition using validated tools um, you'll be able to understand the types of changes to um, the way they eat that you could recommend that will help them and you'll have the skills also to coach them through that so no it's not going to qualify you as a dietitian um, because you have to study for a number of years to do that um, but it will give you some really useful skills to be able to um, assist patients with improving your nutrition their nutrition in a, applicable to a wide range of health conditions as well. That's great. Um, another question is, how does lifestyle medicine differ from function, functional medicine, particularly in nutrition and lab test approach? So functional medicine um, and lifestyle medicine do have some commonalities um, in terms of functional medicine being a you know recommends a lot of lifestyle changes um the different the difference really is in terms of the evidence base um so the range of options suggested through lifestyle medicine is narrower because some of the um techniques suggested in functional medicine may not have quite such a strong evidence base as to have been incorporated into lifestyle medicine yet um, the other thing as well is in lifestyle medicine, you wouldn't find us recommending very many tests that you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't already be familiar with um, through working in an NHS health system context. Whereas um, functional medicine would tend to use kind of uh, more novel um, markers that, again, may, may often have some evidence, but perhaps not the depth of evidence base that we would um, require to integrate them within lifestyle medicine. Um, so. I think I hope that answers the question. Some commonalities, but perhaps a deeper evidence base for a smaller range of options in lifestyle medicine. Thank you. Um, we've got an anonymous question here. I work as a nurse promoting healthy lifestyle choices as my main role. I don't have a degree, but would love to do the course. Is this possible? Um, so email the office to discuss more sort of in-depth um, about eligibility but on the face of it yes it sounds like you would be um if you're working as a nurse i'm presuming you're someone who may be qualified as a nurse um before a degree was necessary um, and we we completely 
recognize that and and if you're working as a nurse then i would imagine that or, or you would hit you know meet all of our requirements for doing the lmca okay. um can you touch more on the health coaching aspect of the course and what that will involve um so yes so the health coaching course is um four modules long it's uh, provided by a specialist in the area um the i'm just thinking if i can bring up the learning objectives um so essentially it'll talk about all about what is health coaching and understand what a coaching approach is and how it differs from um traditional kind of consultation model um it will explore some of the skills that you need to adopt a coaching approach um, so, you know, certain listening skills, different communication skills that you might bring in in a coaching approach. And then it'll go through um, some of the important coaching models that you might want to use to um, give your coaching conversation a framework. Um, yeah, that's the, so I guess, a summary of it. OK, and this one that's possibly for Andrew, is there going to be some way of staging payments? Um, we're certainly looking at that because um, we understand that you know it's, it's quite a significant outlay. Um, at present, uh, we don't have anything uh, immediately, but we are uh, hoping to have something in the next two to three months where people will be able to uh, pay over uh, a, a stage time period. So yes, definitely coming. Um, this one's from the chat. Um, they said that they didn't find hear the answer in the presentation, but would this qualification enable me to deliver private one-to-one -one and or group lifestyle based coaching this person isn't a gp or in the nhs so this qualification or uh, does not qualify you as a healthcare professional it is something to enhance your current healthcare professional status with lifestyle medicine related skills so if you are not a gp then it will not qualify you to deliver GP style consultations. Um, it will, so it, to be practicing with this course, you would need a healthcare, a primary healthcare qualification, and you would still be that same type of healthcare professional, but you would have a much more enhanced range of um, knowledge and skills related to lifestyle medicine to bring into that, um, to bring into that profession. Um, I'm just checking the, the two different questions here. Um, how will we be tested in each module? Uh, so, Andrew, I don't know if you, oh, no, we've stopped sharing now, I was going to say. So I did have a slide on the assessments. Essentially, um, in each module, um, there are some formative MCQs at the end of the module that just helps you consolidate the learning from that module. Um, but then at the end of each stage of the course, so the foundations and key studies uh, is the first stage, then the, the six pillars in depth is the second stage and the lifestyle medicine skills is the third stage. So there's a sort of written assessment at the end of each of those stages. So at the end of the first stage, there is a essay and um, then the at the end of the second stage, it's a case study where you put together a lifestyle management plan based on the knowledge that you've acquired it, it, of the six pillars um, and then the final stage there is a, a critical analysis of a lifestyle medicine consultation where you can demonstrate the skills you've uh, learned and also a reflection on your scope of practice and how you will build lifestyle medicine into your individual healthcare professional role. Excellent. Um, Sally asks how soon after doing this course does the in-person requirement need to be completed? Andrew I think you know that. Yeah, so the, the in-person requirement can be uh, completed uh, either before, so if you've been previously to either our Edinburgh or Tottenham conferences, um, then it would last for um, three or 30 months, I should say, uh, as part of that. And similarly, if you start the, uh, the now, you don't have to go to Manchester this year, you could go to next year's or the year after's conference. Uh, however, you wouldn't get the full uh, pass of the accreditation until you'd have completed that in-person requirement. Um, can doctors from outside the UK complete the course? Yes. 
How would the course as a lifestyle medicine course be different from a health and wellness coach or are they the same? So a health and wellness coach is a specific profession. Um, and I think I've not looked at the pathway for becoming a health and wellness coach, um, but they it is a separate course um, that, that has specific learning to being a health and wellness coach. This is a qualification for um, a variety of healthcare professionals that enhance their practice with lifestyle medicine. It does not qualify you as a coach, um, but it allows you to build coaching skills, um, which you can then integrate into your, your healthcare professional, uh, professional practice. Um, the course would be suitable for health and wellbeing coaches to take and, and I think would enhance their practice in a lot of areas. Um, although we hope in the future maybe to have an offering specific to that um, to that group of people because their background might be slightly different um, to the healthcare professionals that we predominantly designed this for. Um, so I think if it, currently this course wouldn't be something to study to qualify you as a healthcare health and wellness coach, but it would allow a wide range of healthcare professionals to um, build those skills to bring them into their professional interactions. Um, there's just a question on some clarification on the slide with it saying about the WLMO and the ELMC. Um, if this person completes the course from Spain, would it be recognised in Europe immediately? Andrew, do you want to take that? Yeah, so the uh, European Lifestyle Medicine Council is currently going through the accreditation process for um, the, uh, the the our core accreditation program, which we expect to be completed in the next six weeks or so. Um, I think that uh, in terms of whether it's recognised in an individual country, um, that would be up to the, the individual country to, to see whether their health service or health system would recognise the qualification. Um, one thing that ELMC um, I know are keen to do is to look to develop and further link in with individual uh, countries and their uh, respective health services. Uh, as you know, their goal obviously is to embed lifestyle medicine around Europe, uh, and that's something the that BSLM are fully supportive of. Um, there are also several uh, countries in Europe who have expressed an interest in having their own version of core accreditation, uh, which is something that, again, um, where appropriate, we will help them develop. Uh, but again, that's uh, something that could be a bit longer term uh, before that comes to fruition. And in the meantime, we have uh, already spoken to many people across the continent uh, who are uh, looking to do um, the uh, BSLM core accreditation. Okay. Um, there's two questions that are quite similar here. Um, is there a time limit to complete the LMCA? And if it's self-paced and you take more than a year to complete it, could you attend the conference the following year? Um, so the quick answer is yes, you can attend the conference the following year. We estimate that most people will probably take between nine and 12 months to uh, complete the programme. Um, the way that uh, we have it set up is that, uh, as Kate said, after each stage, you have to successfully um, submit an assignment. Uh, we have uh, bi-monthly submission windows for those assignments. Uh, so you, if you miss a couple or two or three of those, then you can still submit the next one and then pass through the stages and so on and so forth. Um, so we do think that, as I say, the majority of people will take less than a year to get through the programme. But um, one of the reasons that we wanted to have it self-paced was for those people who either wanted to take more time or, uh, as we said, uh, have some things that pop up in the meantime that mean that they can't um, commit to studying, uh, that they weren't just left hanging for another year. Um, so it is possible to do, it is possible to attend this year's conference or next year's conference and still be able to be part of the, the core accreditation programme. Brilliant. Um, is the conference the only in-person option? Uh, at present for UK learners, it is the only in-person option. Uh, that is something that uh, we may look to alter in the future, but um, in um, wanting to have some consistency between ourselves and the IBLM offering, uh, we wanted to have that in-person offering as still uh, as the BSLM conference. And this one kind of links, will students who are outside the UK, say for example in Nigeria, will they have to attend the in-person conference in the UK or will you accept uh, external conference? Uh, for those um, countries uh, around the world where there is an in-person conference in that country, then we would accept that as an alternative to attending BSLM 
conference. Okay. Um, will completing the course equip us with a downloadable toolkit ready to be used in daily practice, for example, assessment tools, intake forms, etc.? So, throughout integrated throughout the course are various um, assessment tools and different tools to be used in practice. Um, they're not currently in the form of one bundle to download in one go. Um, they're integrated at the different stages, but I think, I mean, it would be a nice option for people. So maybe that's something we could look at adding to enhance it. Um, at the moment, that the, there are all of those tools that you'd need to use in practice. They're kind of woven through the course. So at the, as you're going through that stage, then you'll find the tools that you would need. Okay. Um, is the course suited to people working in secondary care? Uh, Joanna is currently a physician associate working in surgery, but very interested in lifestyle medicine. Uh, so I would say, yes, um, it's a very comprehensive course um, and you would, you know, the, um, the, I'm just thinking, because in surgery, you're probably you're thinking a lot about prehab and rehab. Within the LMCA, there's not a specific module on prehab and rehab, um, but the, um, I think, I think it, it still, you would learn in depth about the six pillars and how they affect our health, which is relevant whether you're in primary or secondary care. Um, and again, the skills that you'll learn, um, particularly around um, coaching conversations that you might have with someone, because obviously um, when a person's admitted to hospital, that can be a really important teachable moment or one where they're um, wanting, you know, that might be a time that they think about changing their lifestyle. And um, so, you know, having those skills to hold those conversations are, are really important. Um, in terms of the social prescribing, I know that that's uh, predominantly available in primary care, but actually um, coming in more and more, um, I've seen it being integrated and as an option for secondary care as well. Um, so I think the vast majority of what, what um, what you will learn is equally applicable in primary and secondary care. Um, is there any paediatric content to the course? No, not at present. But I would say that the uh, it's not sort of tailored to paediatrics. I think a lot of the information about the pillars in general, uh, I think would be relevant to older children as well um, it there isn't there's a small section on breastfeeding uh, in the nutrition section but there's no sort of specific pediatric content beyond that okay can i just um, add to UK... that? Mm -hmm. sorry. sorry can i just add to that um that um one of the things that uh, we're developing alongside just this co um sort of core accreditation program uh, are more standalone um cpd style courses for our learning academy um, so if that's an area of, of interest, then we would look to see whether we could develop something that would uh, address how lifestyle medicine could be used in those disciplines. Excellent. Um, Heather says, as a UK NHS GP considering a future in lifestyle medicine private practice, would you suggest the diploma or core, core accreditation would be more beneficial? Uh, definitely the core accreditation. Um, because of the fact that it focuses on, um, e even if you're thinking about private practice in the UK, there is still a certain way of how things tend to work in the UK versus the US. And so if you're thinking about practicing in the UK, um, the, the LMCA is much more suited. Um, also, you uh, will want to develop a lot of the skills that uh, our qualification focuses on, um, which, which aren't represented to the same degree in the IBLM diploma um, and uh, our course is obviously more in depth as I sort of um, showed you with the hours of learning as well so I, I personally feel that that would be much more appropriate if you were planning on working in the UK. I think as well it's important just to acknowledge it um, the LMBRC course is 30 hours of learning uh, and it doesn't really have a great deal around lifestyle medicine skills and how to deliver the theory into practice 
Whereas, you know, as I said at the outset, it's one of the, the key tenets of why we set up the Learn Academy was to give you not just the theory, but the ability to then develop that and put that into practice. Uh, and with 60 hours, there is obviously quite a, a big difference in terms of um, the amount of knowledge that you'll gain for, and, and um, exposure to the different lifestyle medicine skills that you will get in the core accreditation program. Uh, and that opportunity through assessment to reflect on whether that you how you've actually implemented them yourselves, as opposed to the LMBRC IBLM route, which is learning facts from the textbook. Um, so one of the reasons that we, you know, when we sat down and said from scratch, how did we want to design a program? This was the way that we wanted to design it to try and get the uh, allow people to get the most out of it, uh, to be able to. Um, develop their skills and really be able to put things into practice and help people make that difference. Um, you know, show people's passion for lifestyle medicine so that they actually know that you know the, the, what they're learning isn't just a sort of rote. Um, I know I know some facts and I can pass an exam. It's actually being able to take that and actually deliver it. And I think that's the most important difference that we've uh, we have uh, between our program and IBLM is that 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 is exactly that that chance to really make a difference to your patients' lives. Um, Okay. Um, there's two that link together about case studies. Um, someone's asked if you can expand more on the 1,500 word essay and what that involves. And someone's also asked if you think people who work in secondary care would be able to do those case studies. Um, so, yes, so in terms of the essay, um, the it's around what a lifestyle medicine is and why it's needed um, and kind of, so, a sort of in-depth description of that and, and you'll find all of that information in the first two in the first section of the foundations of lifestyle medicine and the uh, the key studies um and so so it's just to, for us to understand that you understand what we mean by lifestyle medicine and um, it's that it's usually we use the six pillars and the three uh principles of lifestyle medicine which is the use of the six pillars and um, behaviour change techniques and acknowledgement of the social determinants of health. So uh, we would want you to display knowledge of all of that in, in the essay. Um, then the case study you asked us to elaborate on, um, so that's about putting together a suggested lifestyle medicine um, management plan for a patient uh, based on your assessment of them and the a skill uh, and the knowledge that you've gained from the six pillars courses. Um, yes, it would be possible to do it in secondary care. Um, ideally, you would follow the patient up, um, but if you're someone who sees people and then you don't necessarily get the opportunity to see them again, which I know is often the case in secondary care, um, unless you're sort of a consultant level, um, it, you could very much sort of do the assessment, put together your suggested lifestyle management plan. And then when you in, in the follow up section of the case study, um, you could sort of discuss what you um, would hope to see and that that kind of thing. Um, and, and if you explain that you in your particular job, you don't follow them, uh, follow people up. But this is the things you'd be looking at if you were to follow them up so that we understand that you know what sort of things you would be looking for and then really you want to be um justifying your choice of management plan why you've chosen to use these different aspects and you know talk about the evidence in that particular condition um and why you've chosen to use these particular parameters to follow the patient up so even if you actually can't do that follow-up you still understand that you know how, what you would do if you could. Okay, and link to that, Kate. Um, someone said they're on a career break, living abroad at the moment. Would they still be able to do the case studies without seeing patients in person? So yes, you can also base it on a friend or relative that you you know that you do the assessment on. And some people, uh, even those who are practicing in the NHS. Um, choose to do it that way because uh, in an NHS context to do the, the level of in-depth assessment that you might want to do for the case study you might not necessarily be able to I know I couldn't in a 10-minute consultation do the sort of level of assessment that I that we'd probably need for you to do for the case study so some people do if they, if they you know I'd probably get it over a couple of consultations and that's what I you know what I would do if for, for me myself but 
if you're not currently practicing, then um, using a friend or a relative who you can base it on their case would be suitable. The point is that you're demonstrating to us that you understand how to assess a patient, you understand how to put together a plan in lifestyle medicine and um, that you can justify why you've chosen that plan and you know how you'd be following that person up. Okay, and the last question we've got in the Q&A tab for now, um, is there any palliative or living with treatable but not curable diseases content in the course? So, did, so did you say palliative care or treatable but not curable? Yes. So yeah. there's no, currently not any palliative care specific um, content, although that is something we're looking at as, um, you know, the CPD courses that um, Andrew mentioned. Um, but non-communicable disease in general um, is generally not curable. I mean, obviously you can have diabetes in remission, but many of the diseases that the course is relevant to, it's, it is about helping someone maintain in the long term and get their best quality of life and feel the best they can whilst living with a particular condition in the long term. So I can't say that it would be necessarily relevant to really the end stage of life, um, but the, uh, you know, anything before that very end stage of life where we're just helping people optimise their quality of life, um, that the content would be very, very relevant. Excellent. Um, during the course, will we have different approaches according to chronic conditions, for example, nutrition and the management of diabetes? Sorry, can you repeat that, Georgina? During the course, will there be um, different ways of supporting people with diabetes like managing it through nutrition and that kind of thing yes absolutely so um we've got a particular module in the nutrition course on diabetes and the different nutritional approaches um so things like very low calorie diet and diabetes remission um and also um low carb approaches to diabetes um because we recognize that different approaches will be appropriate for different patients and um, based on what they feel they could integrate into their life and um, so yeah we cover we cover that in quite a bit of depth and I just wanted to say as well in terms of um the questions that are coming up around um is around you know palliative care paediatrics secondary care um one of the reasons that we've designed the assessments in the way we've designed them is to allow our learners to tailor their assignments to their particular area of practice um, because you know you can choose case studies from the area of practice that you um, work in and, and do things tailored to that likewise in the final stage the scope of practice reflection is all around understanding how lifestyle medicine really integrates into your particular practice area okay and then we've had a question from karen why are the different courses for doctors and other healthcare professionals What's the difference in the course content? So very little difference in the course content because at the end of the day, um, the um, lifestyle medicine is not about prescribing. So and, and the major thing that doctors will do that other professionals don't do um, is prescribe. So that there's not that much difference in the content itself. Um, the differential pricing um, is for a number of reasons uh, related to, you know, salary structures and different professions. We want this to be accessible to as many um, people as possible. Um, and also maybe the um, there's there's a more rigorous assessment process uh, for the physicians with an additional case study. Um, maybe uh, speaking to the differential professional responsibility or overall responsibility that the healthcare professional might be taking for that patient. Okay, I think that is all the questions. If I've missed any, please put them in the Q&A. There's one question there about the cost information, which I will send from the office email. Thank you. And someone's requested, can they have the slides after each presentation, which the slides and the video will be available on the website. Last question, is chronic pain covered in the course? Um, so 
no, so essentially, um, that will be one of our additional CPD courses. We are developing a chronic pain course at the moment. So more obviously, you could probably understand it's not possible to cover every single medical diagnosis in depth. Um, so that's with, with those areas, we, that's why we've created or we are creating the range of CPD courses to understand um, how a lifestyle medicine approach might be tailored to, very, to specific practice areas. Um, the, the LMCA is a more overall, you know, a broader introduction to lifestyle medicine. Or say, I say introduction, but it is very in depth. Um, but it's, it's a much more broad um, type course, it, it, really thinking about understanding the discipline of lifestyle medicine, understanding the um, ways we practice um, and the skills that you need. And then when we're talking about tailoring to specific conditions, then that will be achieved through the different CPD courses. Oh, that's fantastic. And I don't see any more questions in the Q&A tab. Well, again, thank you all for attending this evening. Um, it's been brilliant to see such a uh, an engaged amount of people with some really interesting questions. Um, I appreciate that um, some of the, the questions and points that were raised in the in the chat function may we may not have got to. Um, so if uh, you feel there's anything else that you'd like to know about core accreditation uh, and haven't found out tonight, uh, then I know this video is going back on uh, the our website uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, so feel free to have a look through there. We will be circulating some of the questions uh, from this uh, as a, a document. And again, that'll be linked on our website. Uh, and, and feel free to either contact the office uh, at office at baselm.org.uk uh, and we'll pick up any uh, other queries that you may have uh, that you may not have thought of yet. That you may want to reflect on and come back to us and we'll be happy to to do that and, and have a conversation if, uh, if uh, that's something that you would like as well. Uh, but again, all it says to me is to thank my colleagues for helping us uh, get all of this sorted out. And more importantly, thank all of you for your interest in lifestyle medicine, your interest in core accreditation. Uh, and finally, uh, thank you just to everyone. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you now. Thank you. Bye.